Um, as Jess uh, indicated, I'm Ben Knight. I'm a biophysical marine scientist from the Cawthron Institute in Nelson. Um, and I'm going to be presenting some work on some uh, forecasting of bacterial plumes that we've been looking at in uh, the top of the South Island, so Tasman and Golden Bay. Um, just to give you a bit of background to the project, it's a collaborative project between uh, NIWA, uh, Cawthron and Met Ocean Solutions, who are a the kind of oceanographic branch of the Met Service. Um, so David Plew is, uh, heads up the NEWA team and, and Brett Beamsley heads up the Met Ocean team. So I'd just like to acknowledge their efforts um, in this project. Um, it's a shame they can't be here, but um, yeah, their teams have both, both put a lot of effort into this project. Um, so just um, a bit more background about, around the uh, Sustainable Seas um, National, not, National Science Challenge. Um, it has goals to provide healthy marine eco ecosystems for, uh, uh, for all New Zealanders. And um, in the Valuable Seas Program, which, which this uh, project is located, um, it's really got, it's, it's focused on adding value uh, and innovative ways to these systems. So um, just to, to let you know that this is a bit of uh, an applied pro project that's come out of that program. Um, a little bit more about my background. So I'm a biophysical marine scientist. Uh, what does that mean? Um, basically, I'm an oceanographer that's interested in coastal ecology um, and also water quality. Um, I have a lot of, uh, uh, in my spare time, I spend a lot of time in the water, so I'm an ocean swimmer. Um, and so the types of things I'll be presenting today are kind of directly relevant to me. I also really enjoy seafood, so <laughs> um, yeah, both of these things I see is very important. Um, and interestingly, in this picture you can sort of see, this is a picture of Nelson Harbour, um, this is where I go swimming here, um, but you can see there's uh, these sort of plumes, turbid plumes, where um, the water quality changes from a sort of a, a turbid colour to this nice clear blue. Um, so you can see a lot of these features um, which are often associated with bacterial concentrations in the water around um, Nelson every day. So it's, it's really neat to be able to kind of see um, the things that we're modelling with uh, mathematics uh, in real life as well. Um, so first of all, why, why are we interested in bacteria? I mean, everyone knows that yeah, if you get a, a belly full of um, bacteria laden water, it's, it's not going to necessarily end that well for you. Uh, it can mean just a bit of an upset stomach, but um, it can also have some quite major effects. And I just went scouring the internet for some sort of ex the extreme end of the spectrum. Came across some, um, some pretty nasty ones that talk about flesh eating bacteria in and, um, and Florida and, and things like that. Um, yep, so, uh, and often these uh, interactions with uh, bacteria coming through uh, cuts on people's skin or, or, in this case, tattoos. So they're not necessarily just swallowing water. So there's um, a bit to think about how, how you might um, uh, come into contact with this bacteria. And also, I mean, more recently, there was a Vibrio outbreak in some raw mussels um, from the Coromandel Harbour, so uh, quite relevant to this region, um, where people from Auckland potentially came into contact with um, shellfish that was infected with some of this bacteria. Um, so I'm not sure, I've, I've kept this talk fairly general, I'm not sure how many people uh, know what a muscle pump is or what it looks like, so I just thought it would be useful to provide a bit of background on that. Um, so if you've never seen a muscle farm before, this is kind of what you'd see on an inshore um, area in the Marlborough Sound. So you, you just see these little black boys um, dotted on the water. Um, this is a very intense uh, form of aquaculture. They have a relatively uh, small area to work with and they have quite productive waters, so they're able to farm um, quite high intensities, whereas if you went to um, some of the new offshore farms, the spaces between the lines of buoys there would be a, a lot further apart. Um, and the really interesting thing that's not, not hugely exciting from the, um, the surface, you might occasionally see a seal draped on, on these buoys or, or um, seabirds perched on them. Um, but once you get under the water, it's, it's quite a different story. So you've got this um, 
these sort of strings of ropes um, uh, suspended beneath these buoys um, and quite high densities. So there can be up to 200 muscles per, per metre of rope and these, meters, uh, these ropes might go down sort of 10 to 15 metres. Each one of those muscles is filtering um, several litres of water per hour. So you can see that um, if bacteria was in the water, potentially they could accumulate that. And so that's, that's the sort of the heart of the issue behind this project. Um, and also to give you a bit more about the beaches around the Nelson region, so we have um, sort of local urban beaches like you have around Auckland, um, Tohununu Beach, but we also have the Abel Tasman National Park with these beautiful golden sand beaches and um, a lot of tourist value um, and having those beaches, so making them safe to swim is, is really, really important. So yeah, to, to give you a bit of an overview of this, um, basically the problem is, uh, is twofold in Nelson, so we've got um, the potential for bacterial plumes to interact with um, aquaculture space in, uh, in and around the top of the south. Um, and if you look at the diagram over here, you can see that um, there's potentially some, some quite large areas that have been consented for aquaculture. Um, so you could be looking at perhaps 20% of New Zealand's production coming out of this area in future. So it's a very, very valuable area uh, for aquaculture. Um, but as you can see in this uh, satellite image during flood events, um, these sort of turbid plumes can, can infringe on these areas and, and cause problems. So really that's um, the main kind of drive behind this project is to allow the aquaculture industry to get a better idea of, of where these plumes are going within their farm areas so that they can see uh, are there areas that we don't want to touch and are there areas that are potentially safe to harvest. So, um, it's sort of the first step. Obviously, they're going to have to go out and take measurements in these areas as well, but um, at least provides them a view of, of how um, land pollution could be affecting their farms. Um, and the benefit for the beach users around Nelson is that because we're looking at bacteria, uh, it's also relevant to swimmers in the region. So um, the council's been really supportive of this project and um, provided information um, along their beaches that we can use to, to check the quality of these models. Um, so there's a couple of different types of pollution that we look at when we look at bacterial pollution. So there's obviously point source location uh, pollution, which can come from um, like sewer overflows um, uh, and spillages, uh, say directly from say a boat that's tied up. Um, that, that's the type of stuff that we're not uh, so interested in. We're, more interested in the diff diffuse pollution, so that's the pollution coming off land um, and runoff. Um, so that's, just to let you know, that would be the focus of this talk. Um, the other thing that's important to, to think about is um, we don't necessarily look for the, the bacteria that are causing the problems, so um, we're looking at indicator bacteria, so we use uh, E. coli and Enterococci as the two main indicator species. Um, e. coli is more for um, freshwater uh, bathing and um, shellfish. Uh, and Enterococci is used for saltwater bathing because it's able to survive in saltwater uh, for a longer period. So it's a better uh, indicator of potential um, pathogens in the water. So um, how are we looking to solve this? Um, uh, so my background is um, physics and mathematics as well as ecology. Um, so a modelling solution seemed like the best solution really. Um, and in order to do this it's, it's pretty complex. <laughs> uh, you basically start with a weather model um, on this side um, and then that's used to um, basically predict uh, river flows and from those river flows we can then link it up with bacterial concentrations and also predict bacteria in the rivers. And then to transport that bacteria along the coast, um, we then need um, a coastal scale uh, hydrodynamic model, um, which uh, has also been developed for this project. Um, just to give you a bit of a background to what, how a weather model would interact with uh, um, uh, to produce river flows, uh, basically you can see this, this sort of catchment um, model. Uh, with all the different branches of the river basically feeding in 
um, to, to estimate river flows. And it's really the, the river flows right at the, um, the end of the river where it, where it meets the sea um, that we are interested for this project. So all this work's been done by NEWA. Um, they've run sort of high resolution weather models and in these catchment models, um, a person called Christian Zamet was um, sort of in charge of that, that area of the project. Um, and that river model is then repeated across uh, all the rivers in the area. So you can see there's quite um, a large number of rivers that are included in this, in this model. Um, so that interestingly, the colours on these uh, plots, if you look uh, near the coast, Basically, blue is a low flow, red is a high flow. So you can see this river here, the Motuaka River, is, is really important in the region. Um, so that's a bit of a focus for this project. Um, in terms of the uh, hydrodynamic model, um, what we've used a very high resolution coastal model. Um, so the, the resolution, the spatial resolution of this model is about um, 10 metres uh, along the coast. Um, and if we look into some of the estuaries, you can see some of that detail. So it's um, small triangular elements that are used, so it can vary in size from uh, quite coarse at the boundaries of the model um, into very fine scales. Um, so we, we thought that was a really important um, choice of model, so that we're able to uh, tell people what's happening at, at small scale beach, beaches, um, basically. Um, so a model without data is, is really just an opinion, so there's a lot of um, data going into this model as well. So we have, we're really lucky in the top of the south that we have two operational buoys, um, one operated by NEWA and one operated by the Cawthron Institute um, in Golden and Tasman Bays. And both of these are located quite close to um, some of the large offshore um, aquaculture areas, so uh, it's really good to be able to be able to check that the mathematics is, is doing what it should. Um, there's also a lot of uh, free satellite data that's available, which can give us information on temperature. Um, also, the aquaculture industry is, is continuously checking for bacteria around their farms, so there's a lot of information available there. And the, and the council's also checking beaches to make sure that the, um, the quality of the water around those beaches is, is safe. So, with all of that body of data, we've got a, a lot of uh, information we can check. And at the moment, at the stage of the project we're in, we've basically finished all of the mathematical work and we're just uh, in the process of marrying up that data. So unfortunately, I can't report the results of that today, but um, just to let you know that that, that due diligence is going on. Um, so what, what do our models look like? So uh, basically, they've set up a framework um, MetOcean Solutions have set up a framework in their MetOcean View system, um, which is, is quite a technical platform, but um, allows um, mussel farmers to go in and, and look at their individual farm and see how a plume um, in the next day could influence their harvesting decisions. So um, it's, we're basically modelling a day into the future, um, and a farmer can like load up this model the day before they go out um, and start to plan and say, right, are we going to harvest the inside lines or the outside lines of their farm, for instance? Um, and the idea is uh, to kind of transition from a rule-based system that's just based on the river flows at the moment to this more spatially uh, explicit approach. Um, so it, it's still got a bit of uh, validation work to go, as, as I explained, but um, we're, we're there from the technical side anyway. So. Uh, and for the swimmers, um, obviously the spin-off is that we can uh, also deliver this information to them. Um, so we'll probably take a slightly less technical approach for the swimmers. They really just want to be able to bring up a map um, uh, quickly and see is it safe to swim. Um, so we've basically developed a prototype platform that the councils can pick up um, and adapt for their needs. So we have two councils operating in, in the Nelson region, um, Nelson City Council and Tasman District Council. So um, basically if those two councils want to get together and improve uh, on this prototype work, they can do that. Or if they want to do their own um, sort of custom thing, they can also take that, take that away with them. 
Uh, so what? So we've done all this work. Um, what does it mean? So uh, basically we've looked at um, the current closure criteria um, and it, at certain periods, basically the, the mussel farms can, can't harvest for months at a time. So that has knock-on effects to the factories, which means they can no longer process mussels. So people that are on contracts basically can't work for that period. Um, so it has a big, big social impact in these relatively small communities. Um, so what, what we predict is if 10% if of um, the production time can be increased, then that's worth millions to that industry, particularly as it grows into the future. Um, obviously, uh, by uh, swimmers being able to access information on the quality of the water, they can make the decision not to swim, and we hope that will uh, decrease the um, illnesses that are seen in this region. Uh, and the other thing that we hope will happen is uh, people will become more aware of the issues. We can actually show uh, what catchments are potentially causing the problems um, where people swim or, or what problems they're having on the, uh, the agriculture industry. So we hope that can provide a sort of up the river approach to um, improving the water quality. So it's, um, Hopefully we can move to something that's more like this, this beautiful clean waters in future. Um, so just to give you a bit of uh, background to what's available in Auckland already, I'm not sure if many of you have heard of Safe Swim. Um, so that's basically a, a project that um, looks at um, sewer overflows, so those sort of point source um, uh, uh, impacts of, um, on bacterial pollution. So they are really, really, very, very important problem in this area. Um, but there's also the potential for um, diffuse inputs as well from rivers. Um, so I think there's yeah, potential for some of the stuff that we've been developing in our project to, uh, to go into uh, the this, this Safe Swim project. Um, there's also a lot of aquaculture around Auckland. So you've got some really uh, famous uh, oyster farms, so like Cleveland Coast oysters. So I think. Um, potential, there's, there's potential there to extend um, what is, is a swimmer based system to aquaculture as well. Um, and just to give you a bit of an idea of, of how um, that looks around the Auckland region, I just brought up some uh, satellite images from Auckland last summer and you can see there's, there's quite a bit of turbidity in the water around, um, around the Auckland region um, and turbidity sort of a rule of thumb is you shouldn't really swim in uh, water where you can't see your feet in knee deep water. Um, so, but obviously if it looks like that most of the time then you might not be swimming. So <laughs> uh, I think you can do better than that um, and uh, basically hopefully extend some of these um, techniques we've developed in our project to, to the Auckland region. So as a summary, obviously bacterial <coughs> Pollution is a, is a serious issue. Um, we have some new tools that can help you understand it better, um, and hopefully, uh, with people power, it can, it can lead to better uh, water quality in future. Um, that's the end of my talk, so thank you very much for listening, and I'll pass on to my colleague, Lincoln McKenzie. Um, there'll be questions at the end, by the way. <laughs>